for coming. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everybody. And we kind of were chit chatting a little bit since uh, we had a little bit of time with some of you, but uh, we always like to start our meetings here in Corning with some good things. So I don't know if anybody has some great things to share. We'd love to hear it. Winter break is coming. <laughs> Says Ova. It's always crazy to me how that fall break, I mean, three weeks, and now winter break again. So, I mean, it's, it's great for us, but I don't know, as parents, do y'all like that? I do. Yeah. 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 It's nice. <laughs> Sometimes, right? <laughs> that, second, that second winter break, we do like, okay, it's time. <laughs> What else is going on though with y'all or your kids and good things in the district? I can share one. Yes, please. Uh, so I had a long, long, little, long, long battle essentially to get my internet to be fixed. Uh, after one month without internet, it finally got fixed the past week. So I'm uh, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. How do you go a month without yeah, internet right. in your home? Well, a lot of voice, a lot of DVDs. I also have self-service in my apartment, so oh, wow. I was his counselor. <laughs> wow, I thought it was good. We shared an office, and I, I felt like I was his counselor at times because I would, every day I was like, I was not sure. But I, I, I felt his pain every day. That's tremendous. It's the world that we live in. I had to switch football games. I was able to FaceTime my nieces and nephews. That was probably the worst things I couldn't FaceTime my nieces and nephews when I got home. So that was true. That was my good thing. That's my good thing. It's back. Wow. Wow. That is a good thing. <laughs> so um, I hope everybody uh, got the agenda. Um, and we're going to follow that same agenda items, but we're going to switch it up just a little bit because these two gentlemen were nice to come and share some stuff with us. Um, so we're going to bump them up so they can go ahead and head home. So at the last meeting, you know, we had some discussion about physical activity and trying to get our kids more active. If there's anything else we could do for that. So that's kind of why we brought in these guys. This is Brian Weaver. He's the Art Director of Activities and Student Engagement. And then we have Jake Walker, who's our Coordinator of Student Activities and Facilities. So they're going to share with you what it's they okay. do. It's okay, Is that the one you guys hear all the way Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's it. That's it. In, in the flesh. Yeah. Now you <laughs> met him. For real. He always says that. I'm like, he was tired of that. No, 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 of course not. I never get tired of that. Not when Dr. Terry says it. Dr. Terry actually forgot my name one time in a meeting. He said, this is Jake from. Jake, I forgot your last name. Because <laughs> he called me Jake from State Farm for the last four months. I want to make it four months. Four months. Yeah, he forgot my last name. It was, it was super helpful. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> 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 it's okay. Um, so, anyway, they're going to share with us some things that they have planned, some things that they've got going on, um, and just let us know a little bit about what they do. Sure. Sure. So, we are brand new to the district. And uh, Jake mentioned he's been here for four months. I, I had them out of classes by a month. So I got here a month before he did. So I started in July and Jake started in August. Um, and what we're here to do in Forney is Dr. Terry jokingly calls us the director and coordinator of fun. So we're here to bring fun programs to the district. Um, both of our experiences come from uh, higher education and collegiate background. So we were actually both worked at San Francisco State University before we came here. And there we were in charge of uh, intramural sport programs. I also did some work with student organizations, as did Jake when he was there. And we both uh, did some work with facility rentals and facility reservations. And so the facility rentals and reservations are not such a fun part of the job. So I haven't talked about that today. But the engagement programs is what we're here to do. 
Um, so we actually have this Saturday our Phantom Fest event, which is kind of our kickoff event that we're doing. Um, so we're having a big pink volleyball tournament over at Jackson and Rose. Uh, it's a four foot wide pink volleyball that you play on a regular size volleyball. So it is, uh, it only weighs two pounds. It's very, very light. You get to hit across the net, so it's something that's easily accessible for students as young as four or five years old and other people that are as old as five, seven years old. So we wanted to have something that was easily accessible. So that's what we're doing is our launch event. But then next semester we have a variety of different engagement programs that we're going to offer for students. And now I actually don't want to give if you don't mind. We usually just dovetail pretty quickly with each other, and he probably knew I was going to pass him. I was, I was, I knew it was going to come so, in a couple seconds. So there you go. <laughs> so, building off your physical activity programs uh, are, I think, a lot of our, between me and, me and Brian, we have about 25 years in the world of higher education and sports. Uh, one of the things that we really want to get involved with with our student population here at Morning Ball, the last year's intramural program. Intramural literally means within the walls. So we're not talking about YL athletics where they're going and playing, you know, rock ball or coffin. We're talking about building really friendly competition here within 40 amongst our students. Things like volleyball, bringing volleyball back to 40 finally after an eight-year hiatus, not having really any kind of youth volleyball program in the area. Uh, youth basketball, uh, flag football, kickball, some fun things that are getting our students engaged, building between within those groups of students from everything from K through 12th grade. Uh, we do understand that there's other programs already in the city. You know, we already have uh, basketball uh, with the church group. We already have a you know, flight football. Our job is our, our goal is not to compete with those programs at all. Our goal is to offer those programs in separate times from when they're, they're already offered. It gives students that want to do, have that bigger part of their process to give them those opportunities. And so uh, one of the things, you know, we, Brian, uh, we're actually working with getting hired on about 50 six students from the high schools, both high schools. They're going to be our officials and help us run those programs. So we're giving career and experience, you know, work experience for our high school students, training them with officials. It's a very valuable skill set to have to be able to officiate. Uh, whether you're doing it at this level of high school level, college level, it's a very, very great source of income going into college or whatever they do next and give them a great set of skills that they can develop into whatever job or career that they're going into after that as well. And then amongst all that, we're building my community all the way from north, south, east, west, across the point, city point. That's our goal. Oh, awesome. So this this uh, tournament or fan fest that's coming this weekend, that's involving the community, right? So Sorry. families and students alike to bring them together to show them these types of physical activities, which is kind of what we've talked about um, at our last meeting of, of how we can engage and, and get families as a whole to understand you don't have to just sit at home on the internet all night. You can actually, you know, when the internet's out, like do some <laughs> Oh, that's a good idea. Right, right? So, uh, but, so with the intramural sports, I'm just wondering, like this one, I, I'm excited about because it, it does bring the community together. Intramural is going to be more for the students at all age levels, but will there be some more where it's involving families as well? I think we'll have some limited programming that will be able to offer some one-off events mm -hmm. uh, that will be able to involve and engage more of the community outside of K-12. And I also do think that when the OC opens, mm -hmm. that that opens Indoor box in a way, in a positive sense, though, but opens the door, so to speak, to have so much more programming uh, space and capacity for us to offer those kinds of programs. Are they in that indoor pool inside of the OC, or is it just like right it's in a different building? Right, 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 next, right, right next door, right next door, door to it. Door. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. So the, the aquatics facility is in a separate building, um, but it, you can throw a rock. Are you guys going to look at the indoor programs like right this? So for the pool, uh, the pool is a really interesting uh, concept. Here at Forty, we are all about being innovative. And so the short answer to your question is no for programming to the pool because what we're doing is Forty to save money on that project is we're actually contracting out the pool, any maintenance 
anything else when it comes to chemical or anything else involving that pool or contracting out to an outside uh, I don't know how to raise that one. I was yeah. just curious to see what you guys are going to So they, they are going to have the ability oh, to they're program. Going to do that. Yes. Yes. So anything okay. that they would like to run, swim lessons, any other kind of programming that they want to, to run, that's all going to be them. Okay. We're going to be doing that and not us. As of today. As, 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 true, as of today, I have been told that that is because I actually brought up like, oh, we could do activity X, Y, and Z over at the pool. I've been told like, no, that's actually as part of that contract that we have with the outside vendors, that they are going to be the ones that have the ability to program that. Mm -hmm. well, well, can you still share those programs so then maybe I can take it over there so I have no idea. And, yeah, I, I, you don't share, know. No, I'm saying share yes, the program when you said if we do X, Y, Z, and they said no, so then you just give them to me, and as a parent, then I can introduce it if you don't mind. Sure. Thank yeah, you. I mean, there, there's, there's. Uh, I'll give you credit. <laughs> <laughs> so one that we've had a lot of success with in the past is again easily accessible and uh, doesn't need a, a lot of investment. We've actually done uh, energy water polo before. Inner tube water pole. That water pole. Like so that. you're sitting on an inner tube. That sounds stupid. That there's a goal at each end of the pool, and you're playing water polo, but you're on an inner tube. Now, one rule that I want to make sure that if they do implement that, is don't tip the people out of their tube. Because I have seen that be a rule before where it's like, yeah, if they don't have the ball, you can just tip them out of their tube. That's not very simple. So, inner tube water polo is a, is a good option. Uh, that's probably, depending on age groups, anywhere between five people per team and eight people per team going on in the pool at a time. Uh, water basketball, uh, again, you can use that in inner tubes, you can do that in the shallow end of the pool, depending on the age groups. Uh, water volleyball is another one that we've had um, some success with. What about balance? You just want to talk about balance? Yeah, about balance. <laughs> uh, so there's a game of play college called Battleship where you literally have multiple pool and you got three people each do and each one's got a bucket and they're trying to put enough water to do to sink you can do. It is a lot of fun, uh, but it's outside of maybe even the high schoolers or probably even just the juniors and seniors, I don't think it'd be a very, very conducive environment for a lot of the kids. Uh, but I've seen a lot of really successful programs, anything from lifeguard training courses to anything like that that's something that we actually offer our students that's going to enrich their lives. Uh, the other thing we've seen with aquatic related are a lot of them are rehab related or uh, exercise related. Uh, you know, it's a low impact in the pool area, so anything from water aerobics to, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of all of them, but it's along those same lines. And that's something successful for everybody from adaptive recreation, maybe are not fully able to do a lot of things that they're going to do on a normal service, and so still able to give them a, a way to get them all. So there's a lot of options like that. And, you can bet when they get in there and the player that you ride here, you know, hey, there's some things that are to be like, hey, we, we, we need to do some of these things over here in the pool. We have to have one so long, we're really sad to be in there. So, yeah, they'll be probably organizing and running some of those events, but you'll bet that they'll pull be in there. You're about, hey, we need to do some stuff. Alright, thank you. Well, the intramural sports be K through 12 for all students? And we'll have it broken up. So, we don't want to break it broken up by school. Our, our goal is not to isolate Johnson students playing in Johnson or Jackson students playing in Jackson. We want to interview those students, give them a chance to really get involved with other kids around the community. Uh, a lot of these kids they'll be going to high school with eventually or middle school with, and so we want to interview to make those connections now. And even if they're not going to school for a couple of years, they won't be in the same school together. Make those connections now, even across town, because they're going to do wonders for bringing a community together, uh, especially when we have so much change going on. Uh, so many new things happening, so we want to try to help that, not just by giving the students an outlet and a safe, safe way to do some things after school, but also enrich their lives in the way that they interact with you. And it's not so much geared toward your academics, so it's not a matter, I'm sure there'll be, there is, yes. you know, some, some stipulations where, like, you got, yeah, but yeah. it's like, if I fail English, I may still do intramural sports, where I couldn't play right. if I was in a competitive I've seen this a lot at the college level. Uh, students that are having trouble in academic classes, sometimes the only good thing to have going is these, these, these intramural events. 
Uh, actually, the story we had from last year, what was his name? Uh, Bass fishing team? Colby. Was it Colby? Okay. okay. We'll, go, we'll, go, we'll, go with we'll go with Colby. Uh, he was on our bass fishing team, and non, non event was not school sponsored, it was a club team. He had some trouble with his grades. Uh, he, he was just told me, hey, look, I know you've got a national championship coming up, your grades are not where they need to be. So let's, let's try to get you back on track. He got back on track for one semester. It took, it took him 16 weeks to get back on track, his grades back on track, back on track to graduating. Again, that was a, that was a pretty extreme example, uh, but some of these things, these students will go out of their way. They're like, okay, if I need to play in club sports or to do club sports, I have to have this sort of GPA, let me get, to get on the right now. And so they, they flip the switch to the head, like, okay, well, if I want to do this stuff, this is what I got to do. And so, again, our goal is not to be exclusionary with any students, whether it's financially exclusionary, location exclusionary, or you know, grade exclusionary. We want these students to see that as a positive benefit in their life. We want to share with them. And a lot of the research that you see, all the research points to physical activity actually increases brain power. And so having some time set aside your schedule to actually do physical activity is going to increase the effectiveness of the study that the student would do in the interim when they're not out there having that physical activity. So that's something that we're firm believers in, and I'm sure Stacey and the rest of her big, big on board with that. The other thing that, that we're here that if you listen to Dr. Terry when he's on those Facebook lives you mentioned earlier, he mentions a lot, uh, three things that increase student success, engagement, well-being, and hope. Those are the three key indicators that actually affect about a third, based on the research, a third of student success is based on engagement for those students, giving them some well-being and a sense of hope. And so we're here to help create those three things. So we, we hope that <laughs> we hope that uh, through doing that that we can build uh, a strong point and build community here for the students. Um, with so many new people moving in, myself included and, and Jake included us being in here. Uh, I'm actually curious if you don't mind showing us how many people have moved in the board in the last five years. So some people at this table too. So that's, that's really what we want to do, is help to create that community um, for the students and for the parents and everybody else. This is the beginning of our, you know, our path, our journey. Uh, you know, in a few years with OCO, we plan to have a lot more programs, a lot more uh, inclusive programs from across the district. This is, you know, the spring, our pilot programs, to make sure we can run them successfully. Uh, so we're not concerned that they're smaller in the spring, you know, because it's going to allow us to be a little bit better quality. Uh, but we are going to ramp it up. So the spring is kind of our testing area where we've got some good plans in place. But you know what we say about the best look, we the best play plants. And so uh, we have it ready. We're excited about what we're about to offer. Uh, and again, if you have feedback for us and you have other suggestions of things you can do, please let us know. Uh, we're not coming in here to change everything and do things our way. We're coming in here to integrate what we know what we need. Any other questions for Brian or Dave? So it's Amanda and I's goal when we have these shack meetings is, yes, we have to check all the boxes of what all the legislators put on all these silly committees. Sorry, but, okay, um, all the time. But it's our goal to make, make it not silly. So when the parents, because that's what shack is all about. It's about you guys and what y'all see as school health for our community and our district. So like we had an agenda to do last week, but our last meeting, but y'all brought up this physical activity and how can we engage our kids more, not just, you know, the high school level and those things and UIL. And so it's Amanda's and my job to take y'all suggestions and what things y'all want to see and bring it to you and show you what things maybe we're already doing versus how could we do better? Does this kind of answer maybe what we talked about at the last meeting for y'all in that realm? Yeah. yeah. So, yes, I'm please. Just gonna ask, I wasn't able to attend the last meeting. Okay. Like this particular topic, what what initiated this like concern? Was it 
it is saying that the school board has to adopt a policy that convenes your shack to review or to make recommendations to the board on any human sexuality instruction. Okay? The board then has to be presented that recommendation, hold two public meetings before they adopt this instruction. So I think the discussion still between myself and Mr. Gear is, is that for any new or changing curriculum? Or even like just because this came out, we need to redo what we are currently doing. I took it as an opportunity though for this group to go ahead and review what we're doing now. Are we good with what we've got going on right now? Or do we need to look at doing something different? Um, so after our last one, um, we gave the links out to all to what we currently do as far as using the Procter and Gamble program um, in uh, fifth grade for puberty, basically is what that is. The work the weight curriculum that we do in seventh grade. I think there's a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade actual programming and curriculum and including our biology book which is up for new adoption in the spring so that will be something we'll have to look at because that is the only actual core book that refers to HIV, STDs, pregnancy, abstinence, those types of things. Proctor and Gamble, the Future Kids, and the Work Away, those aren't actual like physical books, is what you're saying? Correct. Like online. They're programs. Program. Okay. And are right. these currently the fifth, the fifth program, programs, um, like, like mandatory or a part of it? Like these are already. These are just already part of the uh, curriculums that we use to suffice for TEKS. The tech. You know what TEKS are? Yes. So. For each grade level, there's always certain standards of curriculum that have to be taught. So we use these programs to put a check mark on those teaks. Um, all of these programs, yes, ma'am. So those um, are they out to help with what class are they out to help? Yeah, in fifth grade. Right. 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 So this that y'all bring up a very good point. What I was going to say is all of these programs are listed in our student handbook. They have to be per TE, per, per TASME. That's something that has to be listed. Um, there's also certain things we have to do, which means it's an opt-in curriculum when we discuss these things. That will be going to be my next question. I have a seventh grader who moves to the district. It probably wouldn't matter which district that type of program would be offered in any district. But is that something that I would have to sign a waiver or consent because I may be one of those parents who is uncertain if I want my seventh grader to hear that information elsewhere as opposed to his father and I sharing that talk? Correct. You are absolutely correct in that statement. And that so is right now it is opt in. Like you have to this year it is opt in with all human sexuality instruction. Okay? Which is good. Which is good, and that is new. So by the House Bill 1525, opt-in was always that way for the Procter & Gamble, so the fifth grade video, right? That's the one that all the fifth graders are like, you know, they want to talk about sex, they're so disappointed because we don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, um, that was an opt-in always, but the word, the wait was more of a, we always let people know this was part of the curriculum and this is the time when we're going to share that information. So it gave parents the opportunity to say, okay, hold up, wait, I don't want them to, but it was more like a, you have to say something for us to pull out. With the new House Bill 
House Bill 1525, that is in effect this year, you will actually get a letter that says, we need you to sign, now it's probably going to be digital, yeah. you know how we are in form, right, we don't print paper, um, but you'll have to opt in for your child to get that instruction. And gives me that option. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's yeah, more realistic now, now that I have a set of graders. And that is puberty. It's a big one And it will give you the opportunity to, even though it's listed in our student handbook, right? Who actually reads it? Who actually reads right? like, so Let's just be honest, right? But it'll give you more of that, oh, hey, yeah. remember, here's where you can go to preview that information. We're also going to give you the opportunity to buy into that curriculum. So if you're if you're a parent that says, I don't want to opt into this, yeah. but I would like some help to do it myself at home yeah. with my kid, and I want to use that same curriculum, I just don't want the seventh grade teacher to, yeah. right? Like that just gives sure. a little bit of option. That may be me. That's why I'm exactly. Asking, you know. <laughs> yep. And it's the first age group that this applies to the fifth graders K through four, there's no second Currently no. Okay. And the we watch the video before the opt-in and the opt out there. Do they have that option of Depend yes. So depending on which program it is. So I don't know how many of you actually watched the Crocker and Gamble one or looked and downloaded that information. But that's the first one that they get in fifth grade. And to answer your question, who teaches that? The nurse system. So now, the nurses do with the assistance of others. So I will say that because we in this district do separate our boys from our girls in the puberty talk, which also is probably going to be something that comes up because of Title IX and other things that we won't talk about right now. But, but we still separate those groups. Um, and so we only talk with the girls. Usually the nurses are the ones that run that one. And then we typically try to find either a male AP, some type of male figure to do the boys. Because I will tell you myself as a school nurse, I have tried to do the boys video. While I'm comfortable talking about it with them, they are not. Right. They're like, really nurse around the right. Seriously? <laughs> you know, that's weird for them. So, do they each get the other's information as well, though? No. Mm -hmm. Oh. No, they do not. Okay. So, so there's separate videos. Uh -huh. There's a very small portion. Very, very similar. similar. Very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what's, what are we going to that shield so, for, for what, what's no, the difference? So, all the talk is, sorry, I didn't no, to interrupt. No, I was just going to say that it's, very specific to what a girl goes through sure. for puberty okay. and what a boy goes through. Sure. For so puberty. we're not teaching so. girls about like the menstrual cycle. We're not teaching girls about erections. Correct. Okay. Nocturnal emission is the one that usually gets. Because I'm freaked out. My, my son is freaked out by the the maxi pad aisle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the boys don't do that. They don't do that. When you're a girl, and you first start you freaked out by the maxi pad. Right. So I'm right. so, so, yeah. yeah. so, yeah. yeah. freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For, I can't answer that question for you. I think it's this group that okay. needs to answer that because I'm telling you what we do currently, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right? And so if we, as a collect, as a group, decide, you know what? I think it's time. We need to bring them together. They need to learn this yeah. way. That may be a change in how we have human sexuality instruction, which would follow all the things holding a public meeting, saying this is the change we're going to do. Do you mind if I ask a raise of hand? Sure. What, would, you, would you want them to only have their gender-specific education, or would you want them to be educated on both? But, I mean, still have the boys receive the boys' education and the girls, and then the girls would receive both. Can I, like, what would you prefer? Well, that, that would be 
I would say it depends on the age. The age group, okay. What uh, and, and my situation may be different. My son is an only child, okay. and he's a boy. He's kind of a shelter. I'll use that word. And so with that being said, I think I would prefer him only to know about his what his gender goes through. Like he's going to have to adjust enough to his own mental what's happening with him and his body. I don't know that I want to share what the other gender, the females, are going through as he's adjusting to his own 12-year-old body. If that makes sense. Sure, yeah. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Sure. Um, what is, it, it sounds like there might be a little bit of like, okay, I'm going to just kind of focus on all of this crazy stuff he's going through. If you were to also be aware that, of what girls are going through, wouldn't you think that would be, like, overwhelming? Or I, I do right I now, mean, only okay. because he's right at that transition age. It's not fifth grade anymore. It's seventh grade where it becomes a lot more realistic. Like, these girls are bleeding. And that I think sure. he needs to know, but not right now as he's, Adjusting to his own what he's going through. Sure. He so had air and like that. He didn't have air and all that. Right. So you're kind of saying that, yeah, really? I really want him to be educated right. in those as well, but maybe um, developmentally at this age level, this is what we're focusing on. Right. And when they're right. whatever grade level, right. we also should say, oh, yeah. by the way. So I'm not opposed. I just don't know that right okay. now. So the point of the age. Yeah. The what about you? How, how many children yeah. do you have? I'm Dr. Shannon Franco. Um, I'm, I'm a licensed psychotherapist, and so I've been I do therapy with individuals, families, couples, a lot of all that type of stuff. So um, very passionate about all of this stuff because it's okay. so we're glad to have you to our kids, right? Um, so I would say that I oh yeah, okay. okay. so about your own children. Oh, sorry, I have three kids. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're younger, so they're not quite into these. But I'm not, but I don't know about well. So six, four, and then 18 months. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so, but, you know, I already, already talked about some yeah. of these topics because at developmentally appropriate ages, we start talking about these things so that my biggest thing is to educate our kids about all this stuff without shame. Yeah. yeah. It's Correct. just teaching them to so they right. a lot more just you know, like biology and, and matter of fact objective ways um, so that it's not a, a thing, it's not weird, it's not scary, it's not shameful. But that's the reason why I say that, uh, that it should be uh, age appropriate. And because I have a big one, I'm a 32 year old, and then I have a 16 year old and a 14 year old. So, and he, he's a boy, and so he was the only child for a long time, and so he was, I got hair, not a look. And you know, so it was just me and him, and so he was like wide open with it. But with the girls, they are a little bit more reserved and more happy. Also, with the wearing of the different sanitary items and all of that kind of stuff, they talk about how to put them on and how they're not seen. And, you know, they wear skinny jeans. You can't wear the big horse pads that we used to wear. You know, that would be right. just they would fall on their knife, I mean, they would die, you know. Right. But I'm just saying, and so the boys, they look for the, if they have sisters, they look for them and stuff, so it's kind of, the girls are like, I wonder if they know a more cycle or, sure, you know, right. aside from their attitude or whatever. They yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to gauge. I think that the best thing is that they can, that we can hop in. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, most of the stuff that, yeah, for that, sure. For the babies, for sure, because they need to foster. They need to know appropriate names for their body parts and all that kind of stuff. But after a while, you know, I think that the parents are going to have to step up and start to, to have these kind of conversations with their kids because we want to say what can be said to our kids, but we don't want to do it. Because it's uncomfortable, right? Yeah, it is uncomfortable. Yeah. It really is. But I'm saying. There's so much that can come into play, and the person who's presenting it, if they're not a healthcare professional, they might put their own personal stuff in there, mm -hmm. which their background could be way left. So we yeah. just, you know. Sure. Well, yeah, either of the stuff. I think we're, yeah. Did you open, sorry. Oh, my experience, my daughter is a she's not going to get but When I was in school, I remember when I was 12 or 11, school going to school, we had the class, um, I come from Puerto Rico, and 
we don't separate. Okay. All, all the ones yeah. together. together. Which I think it was kind of helpful because okay. I was knowing what they were going through and right. they knew what we were going to be going right. through. So in that sense, we never got team because we were not curious or anything. You know, so I think that like for both genders to know what is happening, I think that that can um, make them closer together, uh, just separate them. Or not. I, well, I, I don't like the way you did when you, when you had your class. I was, was in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. I had a class when I was in elementary school and it was both genders together. Sixth grade. Um, and it was actually really younger. Fifth? Um, Four? It's probably fifth, yeah, fifth grade. Um, and I, you know, it's fifth grade. Um, so it was quite shocking to see a working video with a boy sitting next. That was uncomfortable and awkward. Um, but I also, looking back, um, I feel like there's value in boys absolutely understanding how women's bodies work and being, you know, sympathetic, compassionate, understanding, whatever, um, as well as girls understanding that as well. Because the embarrassing thing can be for girls on the period and all that, but boys are so embarrassing experiences as well. And so if there is to, to have the, oh, that's what that is, mm -hmm. and it's not weird, creepy whatever, then there's a lot of less taboo. And it becomes just like, oh, that's just like a normal thing. There's not a lot of, well, what is it? What is it that comes to experience? That it creates this kind of like secrecy type of thing. Because that's the issue we have. One of the schools that I was at is that the students start to, the groomers, yeah, so they're not, they don't know they're not And when not all of the information is presented to anybody, this is children through adults. Yeah. Our minds naturally yeah. fill in the pieces yeah. with whatever we know, but also it always goes to the industry. It always goes to come up like the worst part to, to fill in the blanks, right? Um, so anyway, I'm just asking questions, trying to figure out kind of what the system is. And, and then maybe after today too, you can go on to the website sure, yeah. because our links are there Absolutely. under chat yeah. so that you can see the programs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will say there. In the proper and minimal program we have right now, there is the ability to have the co to have them together. So there's just the girls, there's just the boys, and then there is a co-ed curriculum program that we can follow, still using the proper and minimal video. Um, but clearly, I just want to say that at the fifth grade level, all we are talking about is your hormones are now developing. You need hygiene. Hugely important at this time. You sweat and you stink, and this is why. These are some products that are available to help, right? And so that's why I think the kids get a little disappointed, and I think the parents also tend to freak out a little bit because they think we're going to talk about sex and show a birthing video, which will never happen. <laughs> So I'm not really sure there, but I mean there is an animated picture, right, of the girl's uterus, ovaries, so how all that works, right? Um, for the boys, there is the clip art of the anatomy, you know, of where the semen is coming from and the blood flow and why nocturnal emissions happen. Yeah. Yeah, my son said I saw a picture and I didn't see anyone. He gave me more for that. Yeah. And so, I said, what the businesses don't ask, you shouldn't know. <laughs> so you're like, son, I got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> yes. So um, this same process, uh, was this ever pres uh, presented before uh, to the, through the board? Um, and so, did they give any reasons or uh, what was the objection at that time for co-ed? So, that's an excellent question and kind of segue into um, what I was saying before of why the board has adopted these programs already that we use. So, it wasn't like the shack came together and decided, yeah, that's good, and then we just did it. So, they have approved all these things up to now. 
So kind of why I'm not, if we all in this room decide, yes, we're good with this, and why we've got to jump through all the hoops that the legislature is asking. But to answer your question specifically, it was this group that adopted these things. Um, and at different times, like our Procter & Gamble, long time. We've used it, we've reviewed it since we've used it because the Procter & Gamble has updated their videos while some of my nurses don't feel like they have, but they really have. Um, but, um, and so we review that each time. The word of the weight, those conversations start to look a little different and those are always coed in your sixth, seventh, and eighth when they start to discuss those programs because those programs get more even into relationships and risky behaviors when it comes to relationships and how to say no and dating violence and kind of some more character things, right? Not just the anatomies, right? Um, so it is more age level based and at the time when we adopted that i think it was a consensus that we kept them separate because of the age level and they could interpret understand feel like they could focus on what was going on by separating them at that age level right they're all going to go on the bus and talk about it, right. and then they're going to start YouTubing stuff. Right. So there's that yeah. nowadays. But well, I mean, if you teach a bunch of girls and they have a question or concern, they're more likely to feel comfortable yeah. asking yeah. or sharing something with just girls than if the boys are in there too. So Correct. My personal opinion would be to keep them separate okay. so that they can learn about both, both, but uh -huh. about. And in both videos, again, I don't know if any of y'all actually watched them, but in both, there's a little bit of a synopsis that shows both, male and female, and how we're both growing up, and we both have things that our body's changing. They just don't go into depth. Like the girl video doesn't show the clip art of the penis and what goes on with the nocturnal emission. With the boys, it alludes to the female's anatomy about how it, it doesn't go into detail about how it works, but it doesn't show the clip art. It just says, it mentions, I don't know exactly how it's worded, but about how it does take both to reproduce. It does talk about. about <laughs> how the okay. sperm meets the egg sure. and things like that, but it doesn't tell them yeah. how to do that. <laughs> yes. So there's a little bit where it kind of shows both, but not shows both. Yeah. And we've gone through a, a lot over the years, too, with just even fifth grade videos. I, because I feel like after after they've had the video, then like the worth the weight conversations and programs, they're already disappointed, right? Because they were like, yeah, whatever. Okay, what do you got, you know? And it does, it's more of that conversation of not silly, but like in a relationship and saying no and, and how to, you know, protect yourself and, and how to have good relationships and those kinds of things. So it's more meaningful, I feel like. Um, at the others, and I think they're ready for that conversation at that point. In our experience at fifth grade, we used to give the girls a pack to go home. Every everybody got a deodorant, like as a little party gift, you know. Um, but everybody got a deodorant. The girls would get a pad, and inevitably the pads would be stuck on bus windows and all the things on the way home or on people's backs or whatever else. So I just don't know that at fifth grade, you know, even though the girls, most of them by the time we have the, the, the talk with them, they, most of them are still girls. Matter of fact, we went through a couple of years where Procter & Gamble wanted us to start the girls at fourth grade and we tried. 
tried, and that was terrifying for them. They were like, oh. I mean, like, because not many had started yet, although it might have been beneficial for some, I, again, I just don't know that it was good. Right, because, you know. <laughs> so we went back to just fifth grade. Those were starting to period younger and younger. Yes. Younger, 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 younger. Um, interestingly enough, this is also a side note. I told her that I have to go and have another period that I have to go just like these early. That was taken about several months. Um, but um, research shows that um, the average age of when kids um, have their first sexual experience is 13. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, it's, it's even 11. Sure, 11. Absolutely. So that's sixth grade. So, I mean, we're going from fifth grade where deodorant to sixth grade some kids having sex. So there's, there's some the disconnect there, right? Um, and then when it comes to um, pornography, do you remember the percentage of them when kids have sex in Atlanta? Oh, well, the average age is 13. But um, there are, not there are cases, there's more than cases. But it even dips down into 11 and 13. No, what do you know what the percentage of them? I don't, I can't remember. I have to look that up again. Um, and then when it comes to exposure to pornography, um, again, I can't remember the average age. But it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah. well, it's because of technology and the ability to have it, right? right? Yeah. I mean, a kid, a five year old could be on mom's phone and, and, and accidentally they type they something. make the site so open. Yes. You could just accidentally click something yeah. and it, this whole yeah. scene pops up to the yeah. world. Right. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, most of the time, kids hit fifth grade, they've already seen, heard, whatever. And unfortunately, it's probably been in a negative like, month line, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was something to kind of throw out there. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So I do want to, before we leave, okay. is there any other discussion on our current programs or questions? I think we. You brought a great question. Yeah, I think I'll go home and watch the video. I actually have a seven o'clock meeting myself, but okay. I intend to actually watch the video so that next time I can share my perspective on how I felt Perfect. watching that yep. and having a seventh grader where I need to decide whether to opt in or out, opt out. So I'll give you my perspective. And on the worth the weight, because your seventh grader yes. would be following the worth the weight yes. program, it's actually a curriculum that is taught by the teachers well, in science see. class. It's right. usually done at the end of the year after their state testing okay. that that they do. And um, we don't have great the curriculum that we were able to find to show you is not great. So look but into it's out there, right? It's on our agenda and posted there with the links. It, we can actually even resend out the links and attachments to y'all after today. I would today. Like that because I um, that And so you didn't? Okay, so we'll resend all that so that y'all can look into it. But it sounds like we want to further explore as a group. And that is perfectly okay. Um, again, typically we don't do the video even starting for the fifth graders until later in the spring. There's reasons we do that too. Right from the get-go at the beginning of the year, kids are trying to still learn each other, learn their teacher, learn their surroundings. And so we, we want them to feel comfortable with it, right? So we do try to wait till the end of the year. You know, so, and the unfortunate thing too is, you know, human sexuality instruction is not popular amongst educators, right? But we know it's important and it's something we've got to put in there. Um, but it's all the things, you know, you've got this list of a thousand things in August that everybody has to get done for school. So we try to do those towards the end of the year. So we have, my point to that is we have time to continue to review this. Perfectly fine to do. What did we give you at the high school? When did yes. the proper, when did the proper come into play and what class period? So, right, that is a great question. And I think that we need to maybe the next time we meet, I'd love to involve some of our 
curriculum writers and our learning specialists to come and listen to you all as well um, for your concerns where the curriculum is in those higher levels because it's kind of my passion too and I don't, I don't want to push this but I would love to see health class be brought back. There is way too many things, important things that, that the life skills that need to be learned that can be learned in health class. So um, I think that that would be a great thing to bring some of our curriculum writers in. Is there a way that this committee could suggest we bring that back? Yes. Okay. yes. Make it because like in Dallas, it's mandatory for students to graduate. Right. They have to have one semester. Mm -hmm. And then they have the optional advanced health that they choose. Ooh, I like that. And so it turns we... into a full year mm -hmm. where you can not only, I mean, you do your curriculum, like what is health and wellness, and you do nutrition, but then you also do PAPA, and you do um, CPR. Stop the weed. Stop, stop the weed. Yeah, and then the yep. human growth and development. And then, um, you know, they're not really getting too much onto the SPPs and stuff in your science classes. Right. And so, I think it does need to be like that. It's great. And yes. I mean, I'm just like, I have very good patients that I work with college students, and they're like, they have a very flippant about SPPs. Right. And even then, they have it. And it, it's not a big deal to them, and that is so, so disturbing to me. Like, I just, I don't know what you're trying to Yes, but that is something that this committee can do, and I think, I'm not the right person to obviously, you know, say that to, but like I said earlier in the meeting, it's our job to bring the people here that will listen and make those recommendations. And the reason why Dallas makes it a requirement is because TEA, the state agency, has given the option for school districts to make health a required course for graduation. It is only a, a semester long, um, and so when forty. I was still here when they took it away. Uh, 20, oh, oh, oh. 16 maybe, yep. Yeah. So, um, because we're doing all these things, right? All these pathways, all this stuff. So, we, we don't have time. Yeah, but it so, makes sense for like your health pathway, your health endorsement to get stuff like that. Then you got your kids, you're gonna find our pathway. We never do when it's something and that's, it's so that's important. universal to all students. And important. I think I only have one last yes. question. I apologize. I think that the seven o'clock meeting um, telephone zone is not going to head out. Is there a reason why um, we have to now record the? You mentioned is that a legislative? So we yes. record it as we speak. Is that something that we pass on to the superintendent? These videos. Are it's going? also posted on the website. Oh, is it? So in that, it's there. The, the new wall is specific that you will audio and video record and you will post that um, on your website okay. within 10 days from your meeting for everyone to be able to see and yes. commentary. That's, but that's good yes. to know. I just yes. I thought I'd ask. Um, that's new to me. I sat on this board as a partway and I don't remember that happening. The last couple of years because it's this it's year really affected as of September okay. 1, 2020. That's why I thought I asked them. I don't remember being recorded and crammed. Yeah, but okay, that's yeah, definitely now. new. So, and they are very specific, which is kind of why I said in the beginning it seems a little silly, but okay. I mean, I don't think we're a group that has anything to hide, so we, we'll we do not. <laughs> and I know in seventh grade they are calling it in real life. I don't know if that's where they'll introduce the community. Yeah, it's IRL. My son loves He's like, I need a photo for IRL. And I'm like, what is that? Yes. He said, oh, it's my in real life class. Oh my God, that's interesting. Yes, and we have brought those uh, curriculum writers in to yeah. discuss in real life. And we've been talking with them about ways we can introduce some of these yeah. topics it's in really that class, class as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's and they're going to be moving that class even younger and younger, which is one that I'm also excited about. Yeah. I think the kids it's a great like course. It. They love it. They Practical love it. things. Yeah. It's life. You know, I'm going to bring their learning stuff in yeah. there, like finance. They don't realize it because they're like, oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a great course. It's a great yeah. course to have. 
I apologize. I keep having another meeting. No, it's fine. We'll wrap it up here. I think we've had a really nice good. Nice to meet you all. Yes, thank you for coming. A fantastic meeting. Did everybody sign in? Okay. No problem. No problem at all. I just don't want to miss anybody um, before you leave. Um, any other, though, discussions about what we talked about before, moving forward? Any of that? I think once we get those curriculum writers in, uh -huh, and maybe we discuss maybe. and we discuss like our it. concerns, then we can get this ball rolling because, you know, not even, I was in college there too, and so we have so many, you know, teen crazy teens and things yes. like that. Oh so, and we don't want that, we don't want this to, you know, to start here. So let's be proactive about it right. and address the things now. You know, and I think that they will be. Yeah, right. 
because I'm an older mother, um, older age, uh, a lot of times their friends ask them questions. What did your mom say about X, Y, Z? Because I, unfortunately, I'm having to dial back a whole lot. Uh, my mom is really old school. I mean, I'm old, so she was. And so she just told us the truth yeah. about the things that there was no birds and bees. She told us the truth right now. She was, she was very creative, but I mean, she told us the truth. I was scared to death for a long time, but I knew the truth. And and so I had to figure out how to tell my girls. What if my girls started recycling at 10? She had just been 10 one month and started her cycle. I was about to die. And she was so cool, calling me collected. Oh, uh, I started my cycle. She called me from school. She said, oh, gosh. The nurse I, I was about to pass. <laughs> when they got they kind of go like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the door the whole time waiting for her to come home. You know, but anyhow, um, so they ask a lot of questions. They have a lot of questions. And what I found just in the, the work that I've done and, and with my kids, by the time that they ask, they have already engaged somewhat. They're more than curious. Or heard yeah. something. They're more than seen curious. something yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's the scary part about it, you know. A lot of us are testing because they already know and they want to know what you're
sadly, but yes. So, okay. Any right. other more discussion? I think that we'll move on um, to letting everybody go home. And our next meeting, on the agenda, I thought we had January did. Late. Oh, you're right. It is the 25th. That's a Sorry, 25th. It is Tuesday, January 25th. And I think we decided six was best for everybody, not five, because that's better than five. Okay, that's totally fine. Six is fine. And again, we're going to say tentatively, but I think we'll be okay for that day. And it's going to be our focus to try to get some. But the curriculum writers, even um, Dr. Weber, who is the chief over curriculum and instruction, and we can try to get her here that night. Um, she has actually been a big proponent of factual human sexuality instruction right. from the get-go, from her starting in Corny. Um, so I think that that will be helpful for us to kind of once again just sort of bounce some of this off and our ideas and what we think is is going to be helpful for Corny moving forward. Are we all in agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. And then anything else? I don't have anything else. But we do want to wish you all a happy holiday and happy new year. So that's just all it is for our lunch. Warmest thoughts and best wishes for a wonderful holiday and a happy new year. We will also get um, get all of you another email with the links of the curriculum and such, just to bring it to the top of your of your email. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Have a good night.